It's focusing on you now. about this idea last year when I was going through some of the costumes in my closet and then out came the childhood dress that I would wear all the time to play in. It was one of the things that got me started on this journey of sewing and costuming and cosplay because I found my love through dressing up by dressing up. Follow your dreams kids. This project was started back in January and now it's nearing the end of June. What is going on? Usually I complete projects within a month's time. I was experiencing a lot of burnout throughout the and so many other projects going on and also I moved to a new place but unfortunately I did not sew this when I was here I sewed it when I was still back in that basement recreating my childhood play dress is a huge passion project for me so this will be a progress video of this dress not so much a tutorial but just how my brain works and how it manifested into the real world so without further ado here is the dress in all of its nostalgic glory if you take a closer look, you can see that there's a lot of wear and tear on this, so it's definitely been well loved. Stains, rips, claw marks probably from cats. I don't want to know what that is. I'd rather it be more distressed and pristine because that means there was a story to it and I actually used it. I have to show you what it looks like when I was wearing it. I was admittedly a cute kid. Look at that. There's no stains on the dress. Oh, this is so cute. Look at the rainbow. Look at it. This was made by my mom and I used it so much and then I grew out of it. So I asked my mom if she could add more on the bottom. And that's what she did. And did I decide to try it on? I want to add more of an 18th century silhouette and that's why I got a hoop skirt for this. Okay, to the drawing board. I already did a rough sketch of what I'm thinking of. It gives me an idea of what I want to do and if I want to add more details along the way, I can. I definitely want to elongate the bodice. And as far as the skirt goes, I, I want it to be big. There's still the original dress design in there. And as far as the bottom of it goes when my mom lengthened it, I wanted to add these extra flowers at the bottom because I thought it'd be really fun and very Rococo. But of course, with all my designs, I may add more, I may add less, but it'll turn out. It always does. If you know me, you know I like to use commercial patterns that are already made so I don't have to pattern up a bodice or a skirt when it's already available. This one looks most promising for the bodice. The skirt on this one may be helpful or this one. I'm not sure which one, if any, will be the right size for my hoop skirt, but what's draping for, right? You know, after watching back through these clips, I've noticed that I move my hands a lot. Like somehow that's going to convey what I'm trying to say better. Okay, next. I now need to grab the fabrics that I think I'm going to use. This is my fancier fabric collection. I think this one is looking promising. It's pink and gold, which fits the bill. <laughs> Yeah. I've been saving this one since the fall. I love texture and I know it looks like a cupcake liner, but we're gonna work with it. <laughs> if it does not look like Barbie threw up on this dress, then I don't want it. And don't even get me started on trims. So there's gonna be a lot of gold accents. There's a pink one in here somewhere. Hold on. Got him. All of these I found at the LA Fashion District. <laughs> This is what I decided on the lighter part of the fabric. I am gonna use the wrong side of this one in conjunction with this guy right here. I confirmed that I'm gonna be using this pattern for the bodice because I have used it before for my Annalise costume from Barbie Princess and the Popper, and I've already adjusted it because I have a longer waist. hire somebody to cut out the fabric. I would, but I don't know anybody. No, that's a lie. I do know people, but I don't know people who would want to cut out fabric. Bart wanted to say hi. Look at me, I'm such a good boy.
filming in small spaces is fun. For added structure, in addition to the boating that I will be adding later, I added in these cups. These kind of cups, not this kind of cup. I sew the cups and I like to leave a little gap for the boning channel so I can put in the boning later and not have to worry about a seam. Here's the boning. I don't know what else to say about that. I just, it's cut it, you can put on the little end pieces and then you, you put it in. I think I need to be honest with all of you. I have not touched this project maybe a week or so because I've lost motivation. I think I'm experiencing burnout after placing the bodice onto the dress form and everything's just everywhere and I've been waiting for pink serger thread to come. But guess what? It finally came in! I know I'm filming this before you'll actually see this, but if you could send any good luck this way, I'd appreciate it. Let's do this. I do not have any set methods for deciding on embellishments or trims. On my designs, it's more like, oh, what am I feeling in this moment? What looks pretty? What looks good with this color? What looks good with this texture, etc., etc. So it's really just intuitive. And throwing it all on there and playing with it is one of my favorite parts about the sewing process. And if there was any excuse to let out my inner child during this, it was at this moment. What I really liked was the ruffles on the bust, which kind of correlates to the lace near the neckline. I wanted this dress to represent my childhood, and I wanted this dress to feel like what it felt like to wear the original one, and I hope I did it justice. I took some creative liberties on it, as you can see. There's always a time where I feel like I need to ask somebody advice. This time I asked my sister when I showed this to her and she said that it looks not as curvy and feminine as it could be and so I'm like you know what that's a good point so you know what I did cut out this like so then just in case the edges fray I'm not gonna light that on fire even though that would be really funny I'm gonna light this on fire though that looks a lot better and the only downside is is that I will have to hand sew it now but I'm happy with how this turned out. Somebody count how many times I have a different outfit on. Initially I was like I don't know what I'm gonna do in the blank space but I think this trim here is gonna look really really cool. Despite all the setbacks and the burnout, working on this project was, it was a dream because I was able to bring to life my childhood in one dress. I wanted to show how far I have come as a person, even though I'm still dressing up, I'm still playing pretend. I wanted to show my inner child that it was okay to come out and play still. There were like these little pink bow flower things on the original dress. So I thought it'd be really cute to add these little flowers here in recognition of that. I really don't want to undo all the seams I have on here. I'm just going to take the lace and lay it over and kind of match it up, cut it out, smack a trim on the seams. I think we're good. I'm pretty lenient when it comes to sewing over pins, but this time, almost 90 degree angle. I am so sorry, little pin. You were meant for much more. I am interested in putting these little butterfly, uh, the, uh, it's embellishments. Uh, Embellishments. I put a poll on my story on Instagram asking if I should put it on or not because if I look at something for too long then it just keeps getting worse and worse. So most of you said yes. Next are the sleeves. This is going to be th these things. Ruffle. It's a sleeve ruffle. There's going to be three layers to it. This layer to match the skirt, this layer to match the center of the skirt, and this to complement what is on the original dress. asked me what my favorite part about this dress is, I would say the sleeves because I decided on putting little roses and uh, pearls and lace on it and the layers of it. And again, I wanted to reflect what was on the original dress. It's that one part of the dress that's like, yes, it's all coming together. It's turning out. 
out. Like once the sleeves got on, I it's a game over. Oh my gosh. Now it's just a matter of making sure that it fits and also sewing in the sleeves because this is the pokey hole of death. I think I need as much room as I can get. So sorry, bud, you're gonna have to go down for a moment. Let's hope I don't kick it. Oh, that would be funny. Yeah, this is gonna be just two minutes of me struggling. It was in fact longer than two minutes. So I have the sleeves sewn in, so and now I get to make my famous bodice sandwich. I'm just gonna pull this inside out again, and since it has sleeves, I'm going to just stick it in like that. Oh, this looks so confusing. So it's the base fabric, the interlining, and the lining. On the inside, once it's all sewn in, as you can see, there will be a nice lining for it to be super comfortable. We love that here. This is the inside. Look at that. So nice and even. Now I'm just gonna... Yay! When I finally tried it on, it just started to click. It's that phenomenon when you see something finally fitting into place that starts motivating you is what got me going again. And then the grommets because I love lace-ups. If I can put in a grommer, grommer. <sighs> if I can put in a grommet instead of a zipper, I will do it. Zippers and sleeves are not fun. I know it's just thrown on there, but this is how I get my ideas going, is to actually see it. I am toying with this on the outside, and then adding this as an overlay with this, which is also what I used for the bodice. Here are the roses that I was thinking of for the bottom. <laughs> Do I know what I'm doing? No. But are we gonna figure it out? Absolutely. We are not gonna talk about the skirt pattern because I messed up on that one. Let's pretend that I never said that and we actually both know I did amazing on the skirt. What matters is that it turned out. Did I not say what pattern I used? It is this one. I just wanna show you how big the skirt is. So for decorating the skirt, I was kind of on a time crunch at this point because I had prolonged this so much that I had to finish this in like a day or two. So this wasn't as elaborately decorated as I had originally planned, but I still wanted to reflect on what was on the, 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 the original. <sighs> the original dress. The light, the gold, the lace, the... Uh, poof. And I think the amount of the cupcake liner fabric really spoke for itself. I think that was the drama that I wanted. Just wait for what it looks like from behind. The roses were ultimately safe to depend on because this was right before I was leaving to San Francisco with my family. You can't really sew on these fabric flowers really well because it's so thick. I mean, there's no other excuses. It was just really time consuming and hard to do. So I, I used safety pins and they stayed on. And then the dress was finally finished. And I made sure that my mom didn't see any of the process of the dress at all so that she could be fully surprised when she saw it. <laughs> the 
Palace of Fine Arts was an amazing place to go to for this photo shoot and I was so happy, so excited with all the photos and videos that we got. The golden hour was amazing. And then my camera got stolen. All those photos and videos of not just that dress, but of family stuff was stolen. I mean, I still have the dress, which thank goodness they did not steal that. Like, oh, they wouldn't have not gotten that far. <laughs> that dress is heavy. I do at least hope that they enjoyed seeing some of the videos and photos, if they saw any. Nobody in my family was harmed. Ultimately, whoever stole it did not steal the memories that I have with my family. So at least I have that and some photos and videos. But one silver lining of this is that I was able to experience doing the photo shoot again with Bella and her husband, who were gracious enough to refill and reshoot with me. Also, please ignore the wrinkles on the front of the dress. It was shoved back into the garment bag because I just did not want to look at it. The whole stolen camera thing just kept coming back. So please ignore the wrinkles and enjoy. did it. I let up Manor Child. I connected with her again. If I had to go back and do it, I would because it wasn't just about the end result. It was also about the journey. This dress was more than just being pretty. It was about character. It was about growing up. It was about becoming my own role model. If I could go anywhere in time and meet anybody in the world, I would meet my own yourself and show her this dress. Thank you so much for being here and for your support and for your encouragement on this project. If you would like more long form content, please let me know. I will talk less with my hands next time. Until next time, bye!